All right, <clears throat> I think we can start right now. It's already 8 p.m. This is basically my first stream. I am pretty much installing OBS for the first time and and uh, setting up everything for the first time. I, I hope I'm not gonna miss things up. Um, of course, comments, feedback, always appreciated. See, but you know, I, I just realized that I need at least something to drink while I'm streaming, like a cup of water or something. Um, but I think I think we will learn some things uh, from this stream. I I really <laughs> hope I'm not gonna mess it up. Um, the whole idea, and actually, I didn't I didn't think about it too much just 20 minutes ago. I just thought about it. I was like, I'm, I'm alone. Uh, okay, Apple Podcast. Thank you very much. Go back to sleep. So yeah, I'm, I'm alone at my place and I was going to start preparing for the next video. And then I thought, you know what, let's just make it a live stream and see if people like this. So maybe we can uh, make it, you know, more frequent. So yeah, let's do it. The subject I decided to go for today is a video on demand platform on AWS. Uh, and, and this is basically a subject that a lot of uh, companies, a lot of customers, a lot of, a lot of um, I would say, uh, people in general, you know, need need something like this. You know, you can think of a YouTube kind of platform, Twitch, whatever. But a lot of you know, a lot of times, you want something private for your own company, uh, some kind of video broadcasting platform to share knowledge, stuff like that. So I think being able to upload a video and share it with everyone. And, you know, share it with people who are subscribed, of course, send emails and notifications and stuff like that. I think it's super important. It is, it is super, it's a super um, important uh, uh, use case. So let's go. Let's give this a try. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's see how this thing goes. So this is a blank page and Taha says, you're going to be great. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see how this goes. Um, so the Lucid Chart is basically, you know, there's no endorsements here. There's no sponsorship. There's no nothing. It's just the application that I use most of the time to design my solutions. And so I just opened a new blank document. And let's just call it VOD on AWS. And here you see that I have already a lot of shapes around AWS and you, if you don't have them, if you don't have all these shapes, uh, you can always go uh, into shapes in use and just make sure you import the AWS 2019. That's the one you could, you could always use 2017, but I think those look a little bit outdated. So yeah, first thing first, when you want to upload, when you think about uploading a, a document, you know, a video somewhere, I think we all think about S3. So that's the first thing that comes into mind. So let's let's look for S3 and my computer just decided it's time to freeze. Perfect, okay, that's fine. So let's go to S3 and basically what happens here in our S3 bucket is every new file that will be uploaded, we will put it into an S3 bucket and actually, we will keep them there. So this will be our raw S3 bucket. So all the, f the, the files that get uploaded, we're just going to keep them there raw. We're not going to uh, change them there or do anything. So we always have a, tra a trace, right? In case we want to do some auditing, in case uh, we just want to go back to the raw version uh, of our files. And so you can imagine, um, I imagine you will have some kind of browser you know, let's just go with the one that everyone knows uh, knows about. So Chrome, right? So your front end is basically providing an interface for your clients to upload videos uh, through a browser, can be through a web app, can be through whatever, but just to make things simple. I also always like to categorize thing, things and really organize them in a way that is aesthetically appealing to the eye. 
you look at it quickly, you understand exactly what's in the cloud, what's outside of the cloud, and um, just you know use some standardized functions also as well. So I always like to use the AWS Cloud Container here to make sure that uh, people understand that these components are within the cloud, especially when we're gonna start talking about functions and stuff like that. All right, so now that we have our ROAS3 here, all right, so what's, 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 you know, if if you remember what started the whole serverless uh, uh, paradigms and the whole serverless school, if I may, it was actually people wanting to do, to trigger functions once a file gets uploaded to S3. So that was like, I don't know, maybe six years ago, seven years ago, people would wanted to just want to upload an image add the watermark on it and then display it, right? Just small functions like this. So it's no, it's no surprise that Lambda integrates super well with S3 and we're going to use our Lambda in, um, in this case as well. Why we want to use the Lambda and what's the Lambda for is basically once the video gets uploaded to S3, we want to trigger the processing. And so S3 upload file, it will trigger a Lambda and then it will send the payload and then send payload. And in the payload, we have the path to the file or we call it object if you wanna talk uh, S3 terminology. So the, the video object, uh, the path, the name, the size, all these things, we will pass them to a Lambda uh, function. And what the Lambda will do is it will use this superb suit called AWS Elemental, where we have, where I have, ah, oh, that's Media Live. Let's, I wanna find Elemental, just Elemental. Exactly, so Elemental gives you a, a, a suit to transport videos right, between multiple, um, um, uh, I would say multiple places, right? Uh, it can be from your on-prem to the cloud, it can be from one account to the other. There's Media Convert, that's another service that helps you to prepare uh, these assets for on-demand broadcasting, and this is the one that we're going to be actually using. There's another service called Media Live, which converts, which takes a live input and then converts it into uh, different formats live and makes you allows you you know to just broadcast them to your audience live. There's media package that also allows you to um, uh, package your live streams and change them into on demand videos. There's media stores, media tailor um, that allows you to insert ads and monetize your content. There's there's a bunch of them right here, but for now for this specific a use case. I'm just going to be using Media Convert. So let's dive quickly into the Media Convert and look at it. And this is this is pretty much how I design solutions, right? I you can't keep everything in mind. Even people with even developers with 15 years experience, 20 years experience, still Google stuff. So it's the same thing. You can't just remember everything. So now I know, you know, that I would be using the Elemental Media Suit. I know that I'm going to be using Media Convert. And so I just I do a quick refreshing on Media Convert and, and and how does it work and how I can interact with it. And basically you can see here that it takes a source content and then outputs it into a different S3 bucket. Right? We'll, we'll get back to this later, but let's go back to our design so far. So this Lambda here will be, uh, Media Convert, will be sending, right, the file, the video file that we put into S3, it will be triggering the Media Convert solution or service with that specific file, and then we will have Media Convert working in the background. Uh, doing the um, um, uh, pretty much packaging our video and then converting it into multiple streams. And we will I will talk about how we can configure media convert. but for now let's just let's just put it this way. So this is our media convert. you know what? I'm just I'm gonna put it here. And so now media convert is working. and according to the diagram here, once media convert, Convert processes a file, it stores it 
in an S3 bucket. So this is our raw, and we're going to have a new S3 bucket. You can definitely use the same S3 bucket and use and store the uh, processed file into a different path. So you'd have slash raw, where you put all the files raw, and then you'd have slash processed, where you would put all the processed uh, uh, files there. But for now, I'm just gonna use a different S3 bucket. I'm just gonna call it processed S3 bucket, and though the file gets here. Perfect. And per the, the diagram here, it says that we could easily, and it's obvious we could easily configure or connect CloudFront with S3 and create a CloudFront distribution so we can deliver these files that now we converted. Thank you very much. We converted, we can deliver them into our audience. So I'm going to use a Amazon CloudFront distribution. Right here. Okay, so it seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna have a look at the chat, see if you guys have any comments here. No, there's only Salah uh, telling me I'm gonna be doing great. So thank you very much. What do you think? Am I am I doing great? Um, let me know. Um, perfect. So okay, so this is pretty straightforward. The thing is, once someone uploads a video, we need a way of telling them that, you know what, your video has been processed right now. Your video is ready for you right now and how we can do that. So let's see how we can do that. I know from experience that Media Convert will interface with CloudWatch and will send an alert, an alarm to CloudWatch whenever it finished processing a job. But let's see if the quick documentation here tells us how we can go about it. So here, um, I think we could have a look at the getting started. And uh, this is an introduction. I'm not gonna watch a video right now, but it says set up, set up permissions, upload source files, create a job. So let's have a look at create a job. Oh, no, I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm just looking for documentation and see how I can create a job. Okay, so here it says for information about tracking the status of the, your job, see using CloudWatch events with AWS Elemental Media Convert. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we know that uh, Media Convert will be sending events into CloudWatch. Uh, you know, there's a status update event, there is, probing, transcoding, uploading. So we can use CloudWatch here, and now we, we know that. B-Dub, thank you. Thank you very much, my friend. So we use CloudWatch here, and I have a CloudWatch event. Uh, it's the same, I'm just gonna use a CloudWatch event here. I'm just gonna put it here. And I'm gonna call it tracking event. And so, actually I'm gonna do it after the, the, the media convert. Perfect, so now it means that once media convert finishes processing my video and puts my new video into the processed S3 bucket, it will send an event into CloudWatch. And here, what does it tell us? Just quickly, I'm not trying to read all the documentation, but we'll just tell it. So it says for some jobs, Elemental provides an estimate for how far your job has progressed, shown as a percentage of, okay, so this is even great. You know, we can estimate, we can have an estimate. And then here, uh, uh, because we can track the events, um, we can actually have another Lambda function that consume these events. You know what, I'm gonna put it here. This Lambda function will consume the event. I'm gonna call it notifications function. Yeah, let's, let's, let's put it here. Notifications function. This one, I'm gonna call it um, job triggering uh, trigger function. And what notification function does is it will send the notification back to my front end client saying, well, it seems that this job is gonna take five minutes or it seems that this job is gonna take two hours. And you know what, it keeps giving it updates again and again and again. So let's, let's build this, okay, let's build this as well. Now, 
I can have the, the function talk directly to the front end, but in the future, if I want to change the way I send these function, these notifications, or if I want to uh, um, maybe consume them in a different way or introduce a new consumer, it would be problematic. So the best way to do, I think you, you probably guessed it, is to use an SNS topic and have this Lambda function push uh, the notification or the event into the notifications topic, right? And then having this notification topic deliver it to all the consumers that we need. So we will have a notifications function that, oh, you know what? I'm gonna call this events function notifications function that sends a notification back to the front end, I may want to send an email. So I'll have just another consumer that listens to the same topic. And now it's an email function. Uh, it might have to want, I might want to update a row in the database, right? So I will have here a DB, I'm gonna call it persistence function. And as you can see here, uh, so let, let me let me just do a quick recap. A front-end client uploads a video to an S3 bucket. The S3 bucket triggers or that upload triggers a Lambda function and sends a payload with the name of the video file, with the path, with the size, with all the metadata. And that's just Part of the integration between H3 and Lambda functions. So you don't even have to add anything, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, separate or, or different to do it. It's just, just how it works. So we get that payload and then we move and then we trigger a job using Media Convert, right? And we configure that job with the type of operation or processing we want. Maybe we want to transfer, transcode the video into HLS. Uh, maybe we want to transcode it into a different uh, type of format. And Media Convert, just the way it works is after it finishes transcoding, it's going to put the new file into the processed S3 bucket. And then after that, we just put a CloudFront distribution so we can, so we can serve right, this file directly to consumers. And, and CloudFront adds also a lot of benefits like uh, caching, uh, we can add a layer of security. There's, there's a lot of stuff that CloudFront adds there. And, I think that's that's alone is a it's a, a side quest, uh, so I'm not gonna diverse a lot. And at the same time, the way Media Convert works is it sends events into CloudWatch, and so now my CloudWatch is um, I knows exactly when the conversion finishes, and then we have a Lambda function that can process this CloudWatch event pushes it into an SNS notification, into an SNS topic. And on the SNS topic, we have right now multiple uh, consumers on that topic. You know that SNS can have up to 10 million subscribers, right? So you can also have here SQS instead of SNS. It's perfectly valuable, but it cannot change the way your consumers work, right? So the difference between SNS, SNS basically it's a pops up system. So it's just send a message and then forget about it. Send it and then have everything, all the consumers on the other side, you're expecting them to receive it and then consume it. And if by chance my notification function is down or it has a bug or there's a problem, the message is gone. There's no way it could recover it. Like you need to be present in order to consume it. But if I put SQS here, it means I have a different set of requirements. Or if I put Kinesis, maybe I have a different set of requirements. Maybe my requirement says that I need to keep track to, of that message. So if my, one of my subscribers is down, next time they, go, they come up, they need to receive everything that, missed, that they missed. So in this way, SNS is not the right way, it's not the right service. I need to choose something else, like I mentioned Kinesis. If ordering also is super important for you, again, it can be SQS, FIFO, uh, it, can be, it can be Kinesis. So SQS, SNS, Kinesis, they kind of overlap. They kind of do the same thing, but they have their own unique use case. So just be mindful of that. All right, perfect. 
So uh, this is our solution right now. We're able, and yeah, I mean, it's it's quick, it's completely serverless, and we're able to design it. Of course, it's not done uh, at 100%, but I think for my first um, stream, <laughs> it's been 30 minutes. I think it's pretty, I think it's, I'm gonna stop here at this point. You guys let me know um, right now in the chat. I'm just gonna hang out a little bit more, like for five minutes more. If you have any questions, for example, why, you know, um, CloudWatch here and not something else. Why I don't have Media Convert talk directly to a Lambda? Or maybe you're wondering, how do I configure Media Convert, right? So if you have any kind of question, just let me know. I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer to the best of my knowledge. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So as I said, I'm just, just gonna stay here for a bit. And you guys also let me know how, how did I do? Um, is there anything I could do to have this, to make this experience a little bit better going forward? I think, you know, a better way of so this is this is a simple solution. This is a, a solution that you could easily plug in and and you know have it as a POC and then start playing with it. And you could also separate it into multiple, I would say, uh, responsibilities that you could give separate teams. Right? You would have a team building these consumers, and then you would have a team, a separate team building these ingestion process. And this team can work. In, these teams can work in parallel. And and all they need to to do is pretty much just respect the SLAs that they, they have between each other. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a, a simple job, but we can definitely take it a little bit further. Um, so media converts. Okay, so Taha has a question. He says, so the media converts will put the video from S3. Right, so the media converts, so the way it works is in S3, you want to put a configuration file. So it's just a simple file uh, um, that tell media convert that give media convert all the the settings that you want it to do. Or you can pass those settings in the in the Lambda function call. And so once a new file is being once a new video is being push put into the S3 bucket, this Lambda function here will get all the information and then make a call to Media Convert API, giving it the path where to find the video, right? Giving it the size of the video, giving it the uh, name of the video, but also giving it more information. And I think we can, we can have a look, you know, we can have a look, Media Convert uh, JavaScript SDK. Let's just see what does the SDK give us here quickly. So there's associate can create job. So create transcoding job. And this is what we will be. This is see this here. This call is what the Lambda function will be doing. And you see the job has settings. So let's see what we could do the input. Uh, I'm going to actually yeah, my computer is freezing a little bit. I don't know why. But you can, you know, the, 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 the settings for the caption, the file source settings, source file, type, the crop, if you want to crop the video, right? Um, there's there's a ton of ton of stuff. I'm not going to go, it becomes a little bit boring if you're not um, work, if you're not specifically looking for it, but you get the idea. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. It will just pass the metadata, not the, not the video. The video will still be in H3. It will just pass the metadata and tell Media Convert where to find the video. Yeah, it would be, uh, you know, it, it would be counterproductive to have to load the video into the H3. Yeah, you saw that right. Okay, so Neo Kuro says, AWS related question, which AWS certification is the most similar to the Microsoft Azure administrator certification? So it's not an architect question. Um, I'm sorry, I, I really don't know much about Azure certifications. I will, you know what? I will take this as a note. I will ask 
uh, around and I'll, I'll try to, if you can just, you know, write this as a comment in the video so I can remember it and I will try to answer you uh, to reply to your comments. 100% I will. But on top of my mind, I don't know much about it. I don't know much about that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's yeah, that's 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 why that's pretty much why we want uh, uh, you know to to make it as asynchronous as possible, because also we don't want this lambda function to be waiting for media convert job if it takes one hour, two hours. We're paying per execution. We don't want to be waiting. It just triggers, makes the call to the API, goes back to sleep waiting for the next video to be uploaded. And you see how this all can be, you know, scalable. Um, uh, and, uh, and again, there's so many things we could, you know, we could do many, we could pretty much dive deep uh, into any one of these services here and, and talk more in depth about it, but it, it, it goes out of the scope of this um, video. Okay, so I have a new question. Will you have essay, wait, let me, why does it? You say, will you have a say Q and A? Oh, you know what? Great idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to do it probably this weekend. Okay. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let me let me try to find some time, and I will try to uh, send a notification beforehand so people can join as well, and uh, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Yeah. Great. Uh, great suggestion. AWS is my dream job. I, I get you, it was my dream job as well. It is my dream job <laughs> as well, uh, so I get you. All right, so uh, I think that's it. I will try to link. Um, I'm not sure how the stream works. See, this is, this is how I'm still a, a newbie at this. I'm not sure if YouTube will actually record this stream and make it available as a video. Uh, if it's the case, I'm going to add into the, in the description links to more details about Media Convert, about CloudWatch, how to use CloudWatch events, and pretty much everything we, we talked about this. So thank you guys. Um, this was awesome. So hope to see you in the next one.